Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Into the Pit. I have Mr. Taylor James Johnson here with me. Uh, he's into crypto, crypto, was it cryptid, cryptids, cryptozoology? Cryptozoology <laughs> is, is, is the field of study, and then a cryptid is the a creature, a cryptid creature. Uh, and uh, cryptocurrency is something I still don't understand. Uh, you and me both. I, <laughs> I have uh, I have put some money into it, but I still don't know how it works. I don't know anything about it. We'll see what happens. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Uh, <laughs> this is not an infomercial, I promise. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on, man. I, I really appreciate uh, uh, talking with you. Um, thank you for putting up with my me being tongue tied. So, uh, <laughs> but you you have a podcast yourself, and uh, what what is it called? And tell us a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, I have a I have a a web series on on YouTube. Uh, it's part of the Paranormal Network, um, which is associated with JoeBlow.com, the Joe Blow Movie Network. So, uh, on the Paranormal Network youtube channel i have a show called that bigfoot show uh kind of like that 70s show but you know uh that one and uh yeah on it i kind of like to just have fun and and talk about and make little videos about what what interests me in terms of bigfoot and sasquatch um sometimes it's me just walking through the woods uh you know going on a rant sometimes uh i produce a, a little documentary um other times i'm just talking about you know a bigfoot movie uh you know we we, we got an episode on harry and the hendersons coming up soon i hope uh <laughs> and you know just just fun stuff like that uh just just a few days ago we had an episode on the ape canyon attack uh in mount st helens of uh of 1924 Oh wow! And uh, yeah, I was able to get my my cryptozoologist buddy slash uh, slash mentor uh, uh, Ken Gerhard. Um, he's and he we went out into the woods, and I was just like, you know, tell me about the Ape Canyon attack. And he just, you know, he's a this man's an encyclopedia of uh, cryptid knowledge, and uh, I was able to take the footage, put it all together. Condense it, up, upload it, and now it's uh, up for your viewing pleasure. And um, so we just like to cover little interesting stories like that, that as long as there's like a, some sort of big hairy guy involved, <laughs> uh, uh, we, we, we cover it. But, um, but yeah, so uh, what, what, what interests you about, about um, Sasquatch and, and the paranormal? Well, you know, there's, there's been a lot of stories about uh not only bigfoot but how there'll be other paranormal activity surrounding bigfoot a lot yeah. of it like ufos which i'm so into mm -hmm. and then what i do which is as a paranormal investigator is ghosts yeah. but i'm looking to expand into cryptids mm -hmm. and and ufos as well so mm -hmm. all that combined i mean there's what's the correlation with bigfoot and the rest of this paranormal activity yeah they they are they all connected because mm -hmm. um, yeah there seems to be in certain areas you get you get uh everything at once um actually yeah funny enough whenever i'm you know on a on a film shoot or an expedition looking for looking for a sasquatch or a cryptid creature i, I usually have a, a paranormal encounter instead <laughs> you know? right right Plus, it's always when I'm looking for something else. Uh, so, so yeah, if you want to have a Sasquatch encounter, look for a ghost. And if you want to have a ghost, look for a Sasquatch. They'll trick you up. And uh, um, another, another funny story where, you know, the, 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 the worlds kind of blend together and sometimes affect each other. The UFO community uh, may make the, uh, the Bigfoot community look a certain way and, and vice versa, versa vice. Um, and, uh, when I had a, a UFO sighting, I was wearing a Bigfoot shirt. Uh, I, I did a whole episode on this. And so no one believed me, you know, <laughs> I was like, Oh no, don't, don't, no, I saw something. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh it was on a it was on a plane actually so it wasn't a <laughs> wasn't the best place to just tell everybody a plane with turbulence. So it wasn't the best place to tell everybody that I just saw something zoom by. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, even I wouldn't have believed myself. Uh, so that's just, you know, always be careful what you're wearing. Uh, Cause people will judge you and uh, they won't believe you if you look like a fool, uh, like I did. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you know, I've seen videos on YouTube about uh, people talk about people like us and how we're just we're crazy. None of this stuff is real. And I, I think, OK, why don't you come on an investigation with us and experience some of the stuff that we've experienced? And then you tell me why, why I'm crazy, because mm -hmm. I've got evidence on especially EVPs yeah. where I'll ask a question and then get a response and it's a, a, a disembodied voice. Mm. And I mean, it's, it's not coming from a radio, you know, it, how do you explain it? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we do what we do is so we can figure out why this stuff happens. And sometimes those voices, uh, they make too much sense. Mm -hmm. but what they say, uh, it makes too much sense. And that, that's, that's the, that's where I am. I yeah. It, what like like you said, we if you don't believe, you should go out and look for it, or at least just open your mind. Mm -hmm. See what I I what I always say is that I am not confident enough to say that I know everything that's out there. And so these atheists type <laughs> these these skeptics uh, in 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 the spiritual world or cryptozoology or anything when they say no that doesn't exist. I'm like, well, well, wait a second. <laughs> let's let's take a step back and and let's not exactly say no. Maybe maybe it did exist. Maybe it's something else. Maybe, but but these people that just roll their eyes, spacemen, ghosts, mm -hmm. Bigfoot, you know, and, and I I get it. I get it. Like the there's a there's a silly side to it too through through pop culture, which I enjoy, which I love. I love silly ghost stories. I love silly bigfoot movies uh, but you know just like with everything there's it's a spectrum mm -hmm. there's a there's a place to also take it seriously and um and that's what we like to do on that bigfoot show um sorry i'm just promoting myself again uh, do it. <laughs> but but yeah it's it's an interesting it's it's an interesting world um where even 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 dinosaurs and sea creatures and things um come into play which mm -hmm. yeah it sounds like we're we're talking out of a, a fantasy book or a science fiction movie um or the or the bible <laughs> you know um and and so these things exist for a reason they exist in our in our films and our movies and our books and our nightmares maybe for a reason maybe there's some mm -hmm. molecule of truth in all of these and the tales of dragons and and wild men <laughs> um and that's what's so fascinating to me uh about this and um is is you know the element of mystery and maybe maybe science fiction isn't all fiction <laughs> right i mean we've we've had yeah. the discussion that what if bigfoot and aliens and ghosts were like interdimensional type beings they just happen to come in and out in our reality uh, you know what what do you think um so i i am definitely open to that and i think that explains a lot of things uh mm -hmm. especially especially uh footprints appearing out of nowhere um and and many 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 sightings that's the only explanation. <laughs> um, it's not just a, hey, there was an animal that was bipedal, kind of ape like, you know, there was, there was, there was more to it. The woo, I, I think is the name, uh, more, more mysterious element. But um, I, like I said, I'm open to it and I, I love hearing about it. I don't necessarily think that we have to go there. For Bigfoot, for or for at least every Bigfoot sighting, I think 
for me, I, I think there's so much mystery just in nature in our natural world that 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 we should that we don't need to go there. Not everyone needs to go there, and I respect the people that do go there, and I I go there too sometimes. I, I um, and but I, I don't think it's necessary all the time, um, and that's what makes it so interesting. Is like, yeah, is this a is this an animal, or is this something more, or or both? Um, and maybe sometimes it it is and it isn't. Um, but I it's a recent it's a recent thought because I had always just it was never that unbelievable of a thought for that there's just this unknown creature out there for me. So, so bringing in a more supernatural uh, element to it is very new to me and I love it. Um, it's a whole new world. Just when you think <laughs> Bigfoot covers everything, there's even more. Oh and, yeah. Uh, and that would, it makes the most sense sometimes. It may, it, that's the only re, the only way to explain it sometimes something that i thought of is there's always that legend of that giant fish that's in the pond or the lake and yeah. nobody seems to be able to catch it but every once in a while somebody will see it surface or whatever well then why would it be far-fetched that you'd have something like bigfoot that you've not been able to catch but you might catch a, a glimpse of it yeah yeah hey and um yeah speaking of speaking of creatures um in the water too that was kind of my first taste of uh cryptozoology filmmaking was a was the uh the loch ness monster of georgia the state hmm. um i was going to film school there and uh yeah so before i i mean i was always interested in bigfoot but before i really did any sort of serious filmmaking or involving the sasquatch uh my first was uh the altamaha ha creature uh which like i said is the loch ness monster of of georgia um a uh a nessie with a with a southern flavor you know and uh i was in a nature documentary filmmaking class and we we had to do a you know a final thesis and i was like hey there's there's a river not too far from us where they say there's a there's a possible monster or a dinosaur let's go and you know treat this like a like a nature documentary i mean that's that to me they're the same thing mm -hmm. and people in my class didn't want to participate thought it was silly then like you know e e even like complain to the professor why are you allowing this <laughs> you know and it was just like oh man now i'm gonna now i'm really gonna <laughs> go down there and uh yeah i just went um with 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 a with with a few people that that were supportive but i i kept i went down there to the river and uh was filming and filming and filming interviewing people who who thought it was a joke people who thought it was serious all just local locals who had never heard about it you know just everybody um and and, and sometimes it became comical just because these people want, they wanted to play around with it. And I, I lit them, I, I just lit. And um, what I had found from, from this, making this film um, by interviewing a historian, um, they, he had told me that the, the, this area of Georgia had been settled long ago by people from Scotland, the same area of Loch Ness. So mm -hmm. did, they just bring the legend with them and they saw the manatee, you know, and said, Oh, there's one, you know, uh, <laughs> before all of this, uh, and, uh, or, or, it, you know, or is that just a coincidence? But, but I, I thought that was so interesting, even if there's nothing in there that the fact that that, that story traveled across the world and the settlers uh, kept it going, kept it alive, uh, whether it's true or not, is it was fascinating to me, and uh, and so yeah, I was always open to whenever there's a cryptid subject to make a film about or be involved in. I was like, hey, uh, I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> well, so it's, it's wonderful, yeah. The 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 worlds of, of of cinema and cryptozoology intertwine. You need some of the same skill sets. Um, and that's why I like, that's why I like your show. You, you cover a lot. 
I try to be open to to all of it because I, I don't know all the answers and uh, I enjoy looking and sometimes like I don't want to find the answers because the fun part is looking. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh! Imagine it, like just right now they find everything. But then all the fun's gone. I mean, of course, those would be you know you could get down to, uh, into the details, but yeah, the mystery's gone and suddenly it's just like a it's just another page in the on the wikipedia right and it's just like it was found this date but and and then they'll and then just like with everything else they'll they'll gaslight us and say like what? we never we all believed we all knew you know <laughs> oh don't get me down that rabbit hole <laughs> well what worries me is and don't get me wrong i i enjoy watching the show for entertainment factor but have you seen mountain monsters um, I, maybe little clips of it, but, uh, wh which one is, I'm not exactly sure which one is that. Uh, well, you got these guys that are out in Virginia and they, they hunt all these different cryptids, you know, there'll be like a, 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 a giant wolf or, you know, a Bigfoot creature, there's all kinds of different ones. And it's, it's hilarious and they're very entertaining. I think it's funny when they you know how in between certain segments they they stop and they'll ask questions or have them give some kind of commentary about what yeah. they've done and a little talking head moment there yeah exactly and uh, they'll talk about you know you, we gotta we gotta be quiet and and you know hide over here and make it but they're screaming the whole time they're doing it oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> and i'm thinking well <laughs> how are you gonna catch anything you're screaming so loud you chased it all off and they just with their, with their the big they, cameras and their sound equipment and the, the the trailer for all the all the crew following them. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, and they're stereotypical of your hillbilly. You know the way they they talk, the way they act, and it it. I enjoy watching it because I think it's funny, but at the same time, it makes me worry that other people are watching it and then they're making fun of what we do, saying, "Oh, this ain't real. It's just." you know these guys acting stupid because they never, never really catch anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and, and you know that's that's kind of the the interesting part about cryptozoology is that um there sometimes is a, a comedic element to it or there can be you can have fun you can have fun and uh and so like like i said before yeah there's different different uh it, it's such a a, a wide genre that you can have so much so many approaches mm -hmm. and so you have the people out there and in in it depends on what you want but yeah you have the people out there who are really legitimate investigators and then you have um people out there who are being controlled by tv producers and um the the outcome is entertaining on both sides but is the outcome educational uh, is it, it will will it lead to any progress? Um, I think uh, you just need to be open about what what your intent is when you're when you're producing yeah. a show. Um, like uh, like I, I've been involved in projects where like we're going to take this one a little more serious, and then and then I've been involved in other projects where I'm I'm you know putting in clips of you know old B movies like you know monsters playing around and. Um, and then I've made straight up mockumentaries, you know, oh no, the monster's over there. And we're, and it's obvious because we have like fake mustaches and stuff, but you know, th there's so many ways to approach this subject. And um, it just, it just depends on uh, how you want to. Yeah. And I've tried it all. I've tried it all. And I, I, I think, I think I found a fair balance, hopefully recently. Uh, where you can play around and have fun with it, but still be honest. Oh yeah, well that's that's, that's the key word is being honest. The, uh, which reminds me of Josh Gates. Okay. Yeah. Josh Gates is he's serious about what he does, but he doesn't take himself serious. Yeah. So he'll yeah. he'll joke around, but when he gets down to the nitty gritty, he's he's all business. Yeah, he has a sense of humor and he has the the credentials. Yeah. Um. And, and that's that's why he got a TV show. That's why he's so successful because he has he has he he checks off all the marks and and he's good at what he does. Um, 
and uh, yeah, that's that's it's become this very interesting industry of uh, of mystery and science and just in but it's becoming more entertainment uh mm -hmm. which at least that'll get more people interested yeah. uh, think about you know at least for me the first interest i had in sasquatch came from a book and a movie you know uh just a book called sasquatch and harry and the hendersons and, and things like that uh you know even even his little cameo in the goofy movie you're like bigfoot what is that i want to look at i want to look into that and so so playing around with it making jokes may at least maybe lead to um somebody else's discovery through through their imagination and through interest um but uh but yeah sometimes just like put a disclaimer like hey some of this ain't real <laughs> yeah that's the problem with a lot of these paranormal shows the you know you, you had the ones that started out like ghost hunters they they were serious about what they did and yeah you didn't see a lot of evidence because they would try to debunk first before they'd say you know what this might be something to look at mm -hmm. and then you know people were they were starving for that so then you got more shows that came on and then you'd have producers in the background faking evidence just to get people to watch so it made the the rest of us look bad yeah and then now it's getting to be where everybody and their brothers got a paranormal show you know oh, yeah. i mean look jack osborne's got one and he i mean he does several i'm not taking away from what he does i think he's serious about what he does but yeah you know, then i've i've had interviews with people in off screen they'll say well you know these guys over here are really serious but when they go out and they do a show the producers want more so they'll do something in the background to make it more interesting yeah it's disheartening because you're like okay which part of this is real and which is is not yeah you I, i've i've heard that and uh yeah that it's ruined it's ruined a lot of things and and some people refuse to participate and mm -hmm. that and others go along with it and you just have to as a viewer kind of keep a keep it in the back of your mind that remember this this person may you know they they may be being controlled by a by a television station yeah. and uh and even the producer maybe can be in controlled by somebody else. And, uh, and maybe they had good intentions at first and then suddenly they're like, we don't have enough, throw this in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about that money, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's very unfortunate, but um, yeah, you, you gotta keep on your toes. Um, people think watching these fun bigfoot shows is just some relaxation and uh, you know you can turn your brain off but now you got to keep your brain on <laughs> um uh and really think about like hey what is their what is their intention here what, what is their motivation who's who's behind this and um and then you you decide at the end so that's why i say go out and try it yourself I, but it's funny a lot of my skeptics i'll say hey won't you come along with me and they're like oh no i don't think i can do that you know well, always yeah. some kind of excuse <laughs> yeah and 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 actually yeah what what really motivated me was you know i had a camera and i'm like well yeah let's like let's go do this let's let's go let's go look for this and and what i have found um I, I always believed, but you never, you, you know, I didn't have full 100% like certainty. I was just like, yeah, I, I, I do believe, you know, ever since a child, as you know, childhood. But what really, really convinced me was actually um, interviewing people, being the cameraman, holding the camera there mm -hmm. as, um, as experts uh, and authors, uh, Ken Gerhardt and Lyle Blackburn, um, just name dropping boom boom uh right there uh <laughs> sorry hey i do that sometimes <laughs> but i was working on a project with them and i was i was the the camera i was one of the camera guys and they were interviewing these these people um and and they all had kind of a similar story they all or at least all of their grandfathers had a, the same story Mm -hmm. and didn't tell anybody 
because at that time, why would you tell anybody? You just saw a thing and you, it was just a family story or, or you, you were just like, oh, I guess, I guess hairy people live in the woods. You know, it, it, it wasn't this big um, earth shattering moment for them. It, it was just, oh yeah, those are the hairy people that live in the woods. I saw them too. Yeah. You know, just let them be. And it, and, you know, occasionally some of them would get reported in the news, but it wasn't this like, you, you know, you didn't see like gorilla like men, hairy men seen at the riverbank and um, everyone just kind of accepted it because there, there was no discovery channel. There was no animal planet. There was no, there was nothing, there was no social media to tell you, or even a science book to, or not a science, you know, but there wasn't, there wasn't anyone to tell you that this isn't supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. And, and so maybe I'm willing to accept that maybe Bigfoot is not around now. You could maybe convince me of that, but I am almost gosh darn a hundred percent certain that a few generations ago, there were definitely things out there that people were seeing. And uh, most of that history has been lost because it was just, it, it would be like seeing a bear, mm -hmm. seeing a coyote, uh, um, you know, or, or seeing a larger than a, an unusual bear. Yeah. And it wasn't this sound the alarms bring in the media uh, occasionally it happened but um and that, that's what truly convinced me i don't think a lot of people are scared they're going to be labeled as crazy so they don't say anything that too the um big i call it bigfoot bullying uh it it happens and i've i've known people and talked to people that are like please don't don't talk to me i or you know in a nice way i don't want to be I, you know, I, I've had so much ridicule throughout my life that I am done talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, same with um, the Altamaha creature, the Loch Ness monster of Georgia. I was talking to this one person and they're like, you know, interviewing, interviewing them at this uh, little fishing center by, by a river. And they had never seen the creature, but they, they would tell stories and they go, I actually, and, uh, and, um, there, there is a guy who has seen it and uh, I go and I track this guy down and uh, suddenly when I turn on the cameras, he's like, "Never mind, I don't want to talk about this. Once the camera yeah. turned on. I can understand. I had to, tra I tracked him down, he's standing by the water and never mind. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, my grade, I have to graduate. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and and I, I guess I should have I should have included that in the document. I just yeah, because uh, that that's such a it, that's almost even more interesting. Uh, is that yeah? At the last minute, this guy once once the lights, the camera, and the action were in his face, he thought of <laughs> all the times they called him crazy, and he was like, "Now it's going to be forever." on uh on digital media uh yeah and and that's 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 a shame i you should never be i am i'm not ashamed of the unusual i i haven't seen very many unusual things i'm not like this guy who's seen that i've never seen bigfoot I've never, but i i have seen a strange object fly up to a fly up to my window in, in a plane and fly off um i've had supernatural experiences um with with what i think are people in the afterlife and and i'm and uh i i never i don't know i never felt like hey they're gonna think i'm crazy or so i because I, because i knew i know what i what i experienced i know what is true um mm -hmm. and and you know my my wife is from mexico city and she's she was part of a mass sighting of lots of things and she, she her sighting happened before mine and she was always like yeah yeah of course i've seen it i saw it. yeah i can you know no no shame no no embarrassment there and and uh and uh that that's that's how it should be we shouldn't 
we, we cut ourselves off or like from from something we just don't understand mm -hmm. no don't just say no to say no to drugs but don't just say no to ufo sightings oh, yeah uh, I, i'm waiting for it because i'm gonna try to jump on board and leave this place <laughs> I had enough. Take me away. <laughs> oh man. Oh, and then yeah, and then where would they take you to? Would it be better? Uh let's let's hope so. I would hope so. <laughs> Maybe be worth getting prodded for. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Now, I grew up in the 70s. And one of the TV shows that came on was In Search of with uh, Leonard yeah. Nimoy. Yeah. So that was kind of my first taste of the paranormal and mm -hmm. yeah, made me think. And then uh, I, I was a big fan of the Six Million Dollar Man. One of the biggest episodes was when Bigfoot came on. <laughs> oh, man. That, yeah, that, that is the only thing I know about that show. Really? The only thing I've seen of that show. And I've seen it quite a few times. And, and that's all I want to know. Uh, <laughs> And I actually want to do a whole episode on just that episode, but the, uh, yeah, just how Bigfoot finds his way into every aspect of pop culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that, that, that episode, that $6 million man, that is one of the, the, uh, the ones that allowed the, the legend to live on, you know, uh, even, and like I said, even though it was silly, it sparked some interest. You know, technically uh, he was on three times. Oh, he's on three times. See, I there, don't know. It was part one and part two. Oh man, of, of when he first came, and then later on he made a return, and so uh, he always yeah, he's actually, back. yeah. Well, they uh, they got to that makes the ratings go up. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. But like <clears throat> he he he's Bigfoot Sasquatch, great with the ratings. He's like one of the most popular spokes persons for for products he sells soap and he sells beef jerky and pizza you know it's it like even yeah the advertising industry has taken yeah and you know like if if only a real sasquatch could know the impact <laughs> that their species or their kind or whatever they have had on on our culture and i'm sure i'm sure they do I'm sure they 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 have a sense of it, but I that 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 would be the first thing I would want to like if we had a Sasquatch, I'd be like, look at all these movies we made about you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, in the Six Million Dollar Man, the aliens created Bigfoot. Oh. And that's Hollywood telling us something that they know. If you didn't know, um, Stephanie Powers and Sandy Duncan played the aliens in that series, so. Oh, how did they how did they create they made a bionic bigfoot oh okay okay oh man yeah i gotta watch so i've just found little clips on youtube i haven't like dived into that yet and uh, he's, he's been played by two different actors one of them i think was andre the giant and i forgot who the other guy was oh wow Oh, oh yeah. Man. See, yeah. you can tell I love the six million dollar man too much. <laughs> I'm gonna do a whole episode. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get your uh I'm gonna get your input on it if you could like help me help me with that one. I'll 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 do a whole interview with you. We'll we'll break down the episode. Uh and what you do if you if you can get the NBC app on on your television mm -hmm. and they have the six million dollar man and the bionic woman on there. Okay. So you can and watch all, them. All the episodes that feature the Sas Mr. Sasquatch himself. Yes, yes. Awesome. So enjoy you some beef jerky and watch the six million dollar man. Oh. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the the pizza? It was uh the Bigfoot pizza. It was like a pizza hut thing and it was shaped take like a Bigfoot. Oh man, that I just that just made it, somehow Bigfoot shouldn't be appetizing, you know. But he makes pizza taste better. He makes beef jerky taste better. <laughs> and uh that that that's they do amazing things. This this legend. What other legends can fit into such? Oh man. Well, you know, here's something else that I would like to explore. And even though I think that it's, they've said it's pretty much gone now, is the Jersey Devil. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, the Mothman, you know? Oh, yes. And, I have a... Uh... I have friends who have uh, who have gone to Point Pleasant and, and investigated and had some strange like coincidences, things they couldn't really explain. Not not anything that like was mind blowing, but all of these little strange little things that happened on the trip and while investigating the Mothman, where you're like, something's going on here, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this, these are their private stories, so I don't know if I can go into detail on them, but like just little strange coincidences, like just that made you think like something else is controlling <laughs> our journey mm-hmm. uh, oh. to oh. this mysterious oh. area. One of my favorite movies, The Mothman Prophecies with Richard Gere. Oh, yeah. That oh, makes yeah. you think. No, that, that did. I, I saw that film. Uh, I was I was younger when it came out and uh I think I maybe even was in middle school and I had no idea that I'm it was old. based off of any, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I had no idea that it was based on any truth when I had seen it. And so, so Mothman for years to me was just this fictional monster. Um, and then, and then discovering that this was based off of real sightings with historical evidence and things like that in a, in a real place and i was just like this isn't just a richard gear movie uh that that was such an interesting way to discover encrypted for me um and uh because yeah that, i don't know i just i was too young and i didn't really understand that like this is a based inspired by a true story based on a book inspired by true true events true sightings um and then a that was um involving a tragic tragic collapse of a bridge Mm -hmm. it just makes you think that there's there and even even the the area has you know it's basically cursed land by indigenous people and the wars that had gone on there and you know maybe maybe there can be like a an area or a land that can be sick that can be haunted and is this Mothman a manifestation of that, that, uh, I don't want to say evil, but maybe pain. Uh, and, uh, or is it a, a natural creature that we just fully don't understand and uh, appeared during a time, you know? Yeah, what's uh, coincidence? What's real? Yeah. Just the fact that they call it a, a Mothman means that we, you know, we have a, a vision of a moth in our mind. So when we see something, the way to explain it uh, as a moth, or a lot of people called it a, a, a giant bird creature. And so, you know, and there have been a lot of sightings of giant birds, thunderbirds. Um, I do even one of the, one of the um, film projects I was involved in, we were investigating uh, pterodactyls, pterosaur creatures in Oklahoma. I've heard of and, that. Uh, I I we sat down with this family that uh, they had nothing to gain from this. They had nothing. We weren't paying them. We were just, you know, we just they just wanted to share their story, and they the whole family had seen the unbelievable. they the only way they could describe it was as a dinosaur, you know. And I even had a a, a good friend who had seen in in uh the dallas area this it seems to be kind of the oklahoma texas thing it's seen a bird no feathers reptilian looking the only way he could describe it pterosaur even with the the tail and this was you know just near near civilization enough for for him to get to as a child um and these people also saw this thing in Oklahoma, just looking out their back porch, and uh, got some, one. He even uh, put out a camera, and at night, it would glow. It's see bioluminescence. So there's just so many, so many different things. And he, it, and and we even talked to some experts who had gone down into rainforest areas, and they're seeing these similar things of bioluminescent pterosaur-like creatures that the tribal people, that the tribes there just accept as gods, you know? 
And, and it's just part of their, oh yeah, of course. Of course they exist. That's what the, the in, in this, in their tribal culture, these things are real. But we, in our culture, cannot accept them because we do not have the proper scientific accepted evidence of them. Um, and uh, so there's just so many, every day, <laughs> you know, uh, you learn of a different cryptid. Mm -hmm. And it's not just Bigfoot. And, uh, you know, even though he's, you know, he's the, the, the Superman of the, of the Justice League, you have, you have the Loch Ness Monster, you have the Mongolian Death Worm, the, the Chupacabra, the, like you said, the Mothman. And so there's so many out there of all these mysteries and even the uh you know the dinosaurs of the congo and in, in africa and things like that there's so many of these mysteries so many of these strange sightings that are like they they can't all be a hoax they can't all be a misunderstanding you know some just just out of uh, statistically out of chance some of them had to have been something real at one time and uh and that's why it's worth investigating what learning about this just in case just in case one of them one of them is and if we dismiss all of them we'll throw out that one that could truly change the world and truly change how we how we view uh, our place in evolution in in god's eyes in in every aspect in science and um uh, and that's why, uh, that's why uh, I guess I, I'm going to always, just like, just like with uh, Godfather Part 3, they always pull me back in. I, I never really tried, I never really wanted to just be, you know, have a show just on Bigfoot. But the, it just kept, the interest was always there. I thought it would, you know. And, that's why uh, I am with ghosts. <laughs> yeah, they pull you back in. They just and keep pulling me back in. <laughs> you find you're like, oh, I'm the ghost guy or I'm the Bigfoot guy. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, uh, and 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 there's so many, so many uh, different types of people that are are attracted to this this type of work. If I go to, uh, you know, Bigfoot convention and stuff, you'll you'll see the 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 hippies the rednecks the the heavy metal the punk rockers the the just the just the good old boys and the housewives and everybody is interested in this and everybody has some sort of connection just like how every culture from from our native american indigenous to the you know the people of mount everest and and, and uh, every every tribe Every every culture has some sort of wild man, you know. India, every everyone, everyone, Australia, Yowie, I believe is what it's called. Uh, you know how how can this this legend? Same with dragons. How can all the just go everywhere across? Just like how they build a pyramid here on this side of the world, and they build the exact same pyramid on that. Like wait wait, they have the same. Yeah. <laughs> the same bigfoot like legend on this and the same bigfoot and the same dragon legend and the same dragon legend and the, you know maybe there's there's something that we don't know something they're not telling us and um if we just if we just comply and our our good little good little students and <laughs> we'll get a we'll get an a plus and the teacher will pass us but we'll never truly learn anything uh, hey think of it this way how much jungle is there still out there that man hasn't gone through? So there's no. got to be something there that we haven't seen. I mean, you've heard stories of them going into certain parts of the jungle and, and tearing down the trees and stuff. And all of a sudden a, a disease will pop up that we've never seen before or yeah. some kind of bug or absolutely something. Um, and, and yeah, in our, in our, in our jungles, we, we thought that, and that the uh, the numbers of the mountain gorilla or something were were uh, were much lower than they were, and then we somebody makes a discovery and go, oh, actually their population just doubled. We just found, and it was like, how did you miss all of these? Mm -hmm. uh, and and not not just our jungles, like that's that's the the oceans, thing. oceans, and even even just our our swamps here, 
uh, in Texas and Louisiana, uh, even just our, our national parks, people go missing all the time, things go missing all the time and they can't explain it. And, 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 and like, I'll be like, when I was in like a, a swamp filming in, in Louisiana on the, on the border of Texas and Louisiana, we would be just for miles and miles just going on our boats and then trekking and I was just like there's no way nobody has been here in hundreds of years this hasn't this area hasn't changed and I don't even know how long I don't even want to say and, and to think that that we know everything that this every little inch of this place and this this earth has been covered and looked at through google earth is is ridiculous uh we we can the, yeah you have to truly like just march and march and march and be like yeah there's there could be anything here uh anything yeah and to dismiss what mother nature is capable of is so anti-science yet they scream science <laughs> hey you you look at this we still have remnants of dinosaurs today with birds yeah, birds are direct descendants from dinosaurs. Yeah. So who's to say that there's not something that may have survived all that? Yeah, yeah, and that they have either learned to avoid uh, human eyes, or their numbers are too small to to it's notice. Uh, just like with the the snow leopard, or you know, there there were creatures that we thought of that as just mythical creatures that we didn't actually uh, mainstream establishment science didn't accept until you know the last hundred years when we were like no these were these are real things they're, they're even finding new primates new fish new new reptilians every reptilians reptiles every uh talking about mark zuckerberg yeah they found him <laughs> too. uh he is and, a reptilian and Sweet so many race <laughs> you know and maybe there, there's some sort of connection there with you know if there can be reptilians then maybe they can also he's he's taken over our minds with this metaverse stuff so no i'm not joining that no i'm way. not either i have no desire uh they've, they've taken enough of my soul with facebook uh i don't need the rest of it give me give me at least a drop left <laughs> Oh man, I got to keep some kind of sanity. That's why I got off Twitter. That's yeah. the heck with Twitter; it's yeah. toxic. But then, but then we have to post our podcasts and our shows on them. Well, you know, I and I've stressed this for good. I've stressed this before. You know, I don't spend a lot of time on social media, and quite honestly, if I didn't have a show to promote, I probably wouldn't be on any of them. But I still stick around the Instagram and the Facebook and uh, what else? Um, yeah. I liked LinkedIn though. I do spend a lot more time on LinkedIn. That's more serious stuff there. It's more well, yeah, business. I, I've gotten jobs through because of my social media. So it's just like, all right, that's how I, and so yes, yeah, this double-edged sword of like, I want to promote my Bigfoot stuff, but I also want to just <laughs> go away from it all. I'd probably uh, lose a job because of some of my social media. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, I almost did and probably did too. Uh, uh, but and I also I have a lot of cute chihuahuas and I want to show my friends. <laughs> I got my kitty cats. So. Yeah, my kitty cats too. <laughs> Grandchildren, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but but um, but actually, you know, look, I'm gonna look on the brighter side of things here. Through because of social media the videos and sightings of bigfoot have been able to be shared more same with ufos and ghost sightings so it's just a, it's how you use it mm -hmm. and and i'm you know because of social media there's been it's been kind of easier to access uh other like-minded people and see what they're experiencing what they've filmed and that they, they can instantly uh you know oh there's a and put it on and on social media rather than being like my my uncle has this tape i gotta figure out how to get it to get it to the discovery channel mm -hmm. uh, 
now you don't need to, you just put it here and then everyone just takes it and does what they want with it and 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 you can have so many different opinions and views and multiple people can investigate the video by you know slowing it down and and before it took like a you know a video expert a video scientist to do and and um and so yeah do we how do we balance that good and that evil right i'm surprised we haven't been kicked off for misinformation so <laughs> yeah how do you prove or disprove what was that i said how do you approve or disprove or disprove excuse me um that's what I we're here for we're here to, to try to find answers so you can't kick us off for that you can't so fact check my squatch <laughs> i'm waiting for the day honestly i am waiting for the day that we get kicked off for misinformation this, this has been fact check it's false mm -hmm. i mean i've been i had a facebook account taken away for something just stupid so who knows yeah um, me too anything well you know suspensions but now it's just a badge of honor i guess uh, yeah i i have been in facebook jail and i've been kicked off so. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're you know we, we we know what it's like behind those walls behind those bars <laughs> ah the stories i could tell <laughs> oh man but um but yeah, I I do. If you wanna if you wanna check out my Facebook, go and see it, and you'll see a lot of my that Bigfoot episodes, that Bigfoot show episodes, um, because that's I'm gonna try to use the evil tool for good and share uh, share the episodes that I make uh, once a month, uh, or I try to, and um, um, give them a like and stuff. <laughs> So, so what is, what is your social media? Uh, just, uh, Taylor trash productions is okay. my, uh, production companies. And you can just search that Taylor trash productions or just Taylor James Johnson. And, uh, I share every episode and you can find, you can find all the YouTube links and playlists there of everything, all my, uh, shows and, uh, past investigations and other projects I'm working on. Um, some not crypto involved uh some yes very crypto uh cryptozoology uh it is the subject matter so um i just want to say yeah man thanks for thanks so much for having me on this is this has been a blast i've i've learned things you've made me think <laughs> uh, you've made me re-examine my life and my place in the universe um let me know when you find elvis okay Oh, he's right here. He's right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's still alive. <laughs> he's in a movie coming soon. Him and uh, Michael Jackson are hanging out somewhere. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> we'll go there. Oh, well, no. <laughs> yeah. Don't go there. <laughs> I'm going to share your, your links in the description. Oh, I appreciate it, man. And, and you have a, a second show that you do as well. So go ahead and uh, plug that. Oh, sure. Yeah. I also, um, you know, like I said, the worlds of cryptozoology and cinema always intertwine. And so I also have a, just a cinema centric show. Um, it's on joeblow.com, the Joe Blow Movie Network. Uh, it's called WTF Happened to This Celebrity. Um, re recently, I, I just finished an episode on Whoopi Goldberg. What the F happened to Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, done <laughs> she became job of the hut <laughs> oh, yeah. i try to be a little nicer than that uh i'm canceled now uh, uh, yeah <laughs> I try to, but um but yeah i i, I do episodes on uh, i did episodes on uh brendan fraser eddie murphy uh child stars uh you know even gene hackman anybody and everybody uh jim carrey adam sandler comedians uh and ho usually there's a happy ending i try to find a happy ending in all of them um sometimes i have to force it a little more than others but it's basically yeah, just examining the life and career of a, a celebrity's rise and fall and question mark comeback um 
But uh, yeah, check it out on JoeBlow.com. Joe Blow Videos is the YouTube channel. And uh, just type in what the F happened, WTF happened, and then enter your favorite celebrity and it'll probably pop up. Uh, Did you do one on Edward Furlong? That's me, yeah. That was Okay, because uh, that popped up in my feed. Yeah, that was uh, maybe two or three weeks ago. Every Friday I try to get one out. Um, and, and that one's doing very well. People are very interested in, in uh, the rise and fall of, of Mr. Mr. Eddie. He's had quite an interesting life. Uh, kind of sad but uh he, he's making the best of it um hollywood chewed him up and spit him out you know yeah. uh which is kind of a sad thing to see happen to kids and and but stuff happened to him as an adult too that you know sometimes you you make your own mistakes too uh yeah, everybody remembers him for from uh terminator but my favorite is uh detroit rock city so oh man he's so good in that He's so good. Like, there's like three or four movies where he's just like perfect, and Detroit Rock City is one of them. And yeah, just I wish he made more movies like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I always say. I'm like, oh, this is this is this is it right here. If only we got more Edward uh, Furlong like that. Uh, maybe he'd be at a different place in his career. Um, mm. And I don't know if you've seen the new Terminator movie. Uh, I prefer to forget it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah spoiler alert everyone close their eyes or close their ears and close their eyes but they yeah they they do horrible horrible things to that character uh and yeah. ruined, ruined everything they do horrible things to that franchise they uh they bent it over with no loop let's put it that way oh my goodness yes <laughs> it should it should disappear and be as hard to find as bigfoot uh but no i put it right there with howard the duck <laughs> Howard the Duck is fun. The, the, the new Terminator movies aren't even fun. Oh God! You can't even Man. laugh at it for being that bad. It's just painful bad. Howard the Duck, you can laugh at. Ah ha ha! That's bad. <laughs> Terminator, at least the last four. Yeah, it's just gone further and further downhill since since the second one came out. It's just gone downhill. The second one is the perfect movie. Has everything you need in a movie from awesome special effects to even like a even like a love story it has it has everything and in, in, in action in between mm -hmm. uh the rest are just just a mess just a mess see uh, we should do a show on that alone just our, on on how everything's just, a mess at all the new movies that have come out that have ruined some of the franchise and are in in the midst of ruining the franchise. It's like Marvel. I think Marvin's Marvel's about to just totally destroy what they built. I feel like they're on the edge of something, or it's like I don't know where are you going. Yeah. I, I feel like there's still hope. I still have hope in them. They can turn themselves around. Daredevil but, might do it. Yeah, but they're on the edge of uh, not being what they not being what I want them to be. Uh, <laughs> Oh, we definitely need to do another show and talk about all this Hollywood oh, I, stuff. I, I'd love to, man. Well, <laughs> and, uh, I yeah, just uh, we've gone little, down rabbit hole, folks. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a it's a deep, deep rabbit hole full of full of crazy <laughs> mutant rabbits that that want to eat everybody, uh, and they all they all work for Holly Weird. Uh, <laughs> and weird it is. <laughs> well, well thanks so much for having me on man I, I really appreciate it uh yeah we could we could talk about anything and everything forever i'm sure oh yeah uh, but eventually i gotta eat uh and sleep yeah and do everything, uh that i shouldn't mention it's a uh, it's about that time for me to start making supper myself oh man so, well happy saint patty's day oh yeah i'm not wearing green but i uh, i am there is irish in my spit according to ancestry.com so uh maybe my underwear is green nope real quick before we go you know why they put only 239 beans in irish stew why because one more would be too farty <laughs> <laughs> oh man on uh, that one, folks. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, there's a WTF happened to Colin Farrell, too. Uh, so that reminds me. Irish. Irish. He's Irish, hey. man. Cool, hey, man. I can oh. joke. I have Irish in my blood, too. So. Uh, uh, yeah, especially. It, well, you'll have Irish in your blood going into coming out of any bar. Uh, I heard that. 
<laughs> well, um, good to see you, my Irish brother. Uh, but seriously, folks, thank you. Thank you, Taylor. I appreciate you coming on yeah, and man. giving me your time. And for you folks that are new to the channel, I hope this didn't deter you. I hope you'll come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry about everything. <laughs> And uh, hit that subscribe button for those of you who are regular to the channel. Thank you for your support. I, I truly, I be, with all my heart, appreciate it. Until the next one, everyone, please take care. God bless. Be kind to one another. Peace. Bye-bye.